Hello everyone, welcome to the second part of this tutorial talking about Unreal Engine Sequencer and Movie Render Queue. So we finalized the scene in our previous tutorial and we've did the level sequencer and we've got to tweak it a little bit so we made the manual focus distance 50 rather than 100 so we have a drastically blurred uh, footage before it gets clear not just a little bit blurred and then we want to render this after it's all done we want to render this so we want to go to the render icon here before we click on the render icon we want to make sure that it is on movie render queue and then we'll click on the render icon we'll delete this assuming that we will get a blank one and that's how we get it we want to add our render to it too. So our render was test01. It was, by the way, added as a default, but we want to add it again. So we'll go here and we'll do test01. So before we do the test01, okay, I will add it. But before all of this, if I go to content browser, it hasn't been saved yet because there is no thumbnail generated for it. So I'll go to sequencer and do save. And when I save it, now there's a thumbnail for it. So hence, if I go to here, I'll be able to see the thumbnail of it. Okay, and it's all saved. So I've got settings and output. Okay, output is where this will be saved. And here's the folder within the saved folder in the content of Unreal Engine uh, project folder. And I've got the unsaved config. So the default is that I can export as a JPEG, deferred rendering, and here's the output where I want to save and the frames I want to be using. So I'll do a full HD 1920 by 1080 and I can do a 4K, I can do an 8K, depends on the performance of my computer and the desired experience that I want to render. Uh, I will be editing the custom uh, frame rate. So rather than having it 24 as the default, I'm gonna do 30. And we've got, if we have close-ups, and we want to do a slow footage, then 60 frames is recommended. But for now, 30 is more than good. And I want to specify where I want to save this. So let's do a new folder here. And we'll call it uh, test01ueRE. -E. Select folder. So what I want to do now, I've done with the output settings that I want to export to. What I want to do is that I want to change the JPEG into PNG. So I go to settings and I can hover over exports and go to PNG and I can find PNG here. I can delete JPG now. Another thing I want to do is that I want to go to anti-aliasing settings and I'll leave it as is so we can compare between the two results that we've got. And I want to go here into uh, console commands, console variables. So what are console variables? Control variables are codes that control engine behaviors and can be adjusted at runtime to optimize performance, rendering, or gameplay without recompiling. So it spears our uh, rendering into a certain direction of light, shadows, texturing, anti-aliasing, and so many others. And the common console variables that we usually use are screen percentage, global illumination, uh, anti-aliasing quality, texture streaming, and lumen reflection, shadow quality. These are some references I left for you, not necessary to use, but you can use and test with them so you can get the best quality and the best result possible. And when I do console command, and I'll type in r.screen percentage and I'll have the screen percentage as no this is on the start console command I need to be on the console variables so r dot screen percentage and that determines what is the percentage of the screen that I'm rendering from so hence the resolution so I'll do this screen percentage let's do it 100 starting 100 and I'll leave everything as is and I'll do accept and I'll do render local so there a frame buffer will open 
my shaders will be compiled. This can take a little bit longer, depends on the uh, PC that you've got. And the footage will be rendering as you guys can see. Pretty quick. So to view the result, I'm gonna go to the folder of it where it's saved. Again, it's here, output. And I'll check the result, I'll double click here and see, I'll go right and see how is it going. It's in slow motion. It has been exported in frames. So you can see we've got 149 frames, almost 150 frames for the whole movement. And of course we can increase the frames till 60 frames, so I'll get 300 frames. So that's the first result, okay? And I'm gonna go to movie renders. This is our folder. I'll do control C and I'll do control V. And here's a copy, but I'll name the copy test two, let's say. And this test two, I'm gonna increase the quality. So what I will be doing is I will go to my unsaved configurations, the settings, which I will show you how to save. And I will go to anti-aliasing and I'll do four by eight. That's the recommended anti-aliasing settings for me. I'll do override anti-aliasing with, with no specific anti-aliasing mean or method because I'm doing a custom anti-aliasing variable. And I'll go to console variables. And from here, I'm going to increase it to 160. So you're kind of inflating the numbers. And when it comes to console variables, guys, there are so many console variables that I can be using. So if I go to Chrome and I go to chat GPT, And from here, I type in, give me all the console variables recommended variables recommended for an ultra realistic Unreal Engine 5.5 .5 Movie Render Q Settings. Enter. And there you guys go. All the console variables that I can be using and all the settings that I can be uh, implementing to get the best out of Unreal Engine when it comes to our rendering. Uh, one thing you guys need to know is that it's unrealistic to, for us to add all of these console variables into one rendering. I should probably be picking among these, not picking all of these because then it will take forever to render. And these are ultra realistic and Unreal Engine here doesn't know what is your GPU capabilities and CPU capabilities. So we need to mind which uh, console variables we add and what is the cost of impact for this uh, to render in full. So what we will do is that for this sake of the tutorial, I will do the screen percentage 160. I'm not going to add any other console variables because it's going to take longer and longer time in rendering. But for sure, it could enhance our rendering to a certain point. So uh, if I want to add even more console variables, I can add them from here. And if I want to, let's say, delete any console variables, I can delete them. And I can type in as many console variables as I want. So for an instance, I want to render this footage, the test 01, and other footages as well. So I want to save the preset so not every time I enter uh, uh, another preset. Because if I go here and let's say I add this footage and I go here, it's still the same, the, the default. So I need to put it all over again. And it's going to take a long time. So what I do is that after I finalize my presets, I go here and I save preset and I go to the content, for example, or any specific folder and I name it Amers Presets. Mind you that Unreal Engine 
doesn't take a space so it needs to be an underscore save so now I've got Amr's presets except once I want to load the same the same presets I go Amr presets yes and there you go I've got Amr presets here as well with the saved location of the project I'm gonna uncheck this now and by the way if you add as many as you want let's say this much okay unreal engine will render one after the other so i can add all my renderings and do the render local and leave and come back and i'm gonna have all my sequencers rendered for me ready to you ready to edit so i'll go to test zero one this is what we want to render and we want to change where we want to save it so we can compare so i'll do movie renders and test zero two no it's not the one here is it control all delete because this is the previous one and we'll do we'll pick the other folder we'll do accept and then we'll render local and we will notice that the quality will be higher and the time consumed to render the same rendering is going to be higher mind you that we only increase the anti-aliasing settings and the console command of screen percentage if we added many other console commands it's going to take a lot more time so we need to optimize quality versus performance so it has finished it took significantly longer time if we go to the folder and compare the results the results will be different So to see it clearly, we'll go to the last frame. That's the last frame of the second test. And we'll go to the last frame of the first test. This is the first rendering and this is the last rendering as we can see the colors are more blended here the reflections are more visible than here also we've got this image is more denoised than this one we've got the shadow quality here is much better than the one here and the list can go on and on with the things that we can experiment with and as i told you the chat gpt the more we're specified the more we can get exact console commands and we can keep on trying till we get the best out of what we uh, experiment. So now as the last step of this tutorial, we want to put all these images together and actually uh, produce a video. So one software can do this for us is Adobe Premiere. We will add this as a sequencer and we will add the second one because it's better than the first one. It opens as this, we'll do a new project and we'll name it for example test 02 because this is the one that worked and we'll do create and after that we're going to do right click and import here and then we will take this path control c we'll go to the adobe premiere control v and we'll click on the first one and make sure that image sequence is checked and do open and then we've got the track here we'll drag and drop and do play there you go we have our animation and now we need to do file export make sure that the format is h264 Specify where you want to save it. In this case, we'll do the desktop and test 01. We'll do save and we'll hit export. And 
there you go that's our video so that's all about it that's how we do the final export and that's how we bring everything together i hope you guys benefit from this tutorial see you guys in the coming ones